Hello everyone, out to Galaxy Lounge here. Hello everyone, out to Galaxy Man here. But fuck. <laughs> Hello everyone, out to Galaxy Man here. But today I'm going to hand it off to another fellow who resides here. Unfortunately. All right, guys, it's the moment you've been waiting for. Let's look at the Outer Galaxy Lounge media collection. Did I morph into the other guy? So the Outer Galaxy media collections consist of DVDs, Blu-rays, LPs, cover art from DVDs. Uh, there's some Latin CDs, jazz, uh, television shows on DVD, Blu-ray, vintage books, hardcovers, reference books from movies. Uh, non-fiction, historical and social and political issues, war, espionage, uh, various historical events down here, pop culture, movies, entertainers of the past, biographies. Uh, in that cabinet we have rock CDs and pop and hip-hop. Uh, here we have paperback books fiction, novels, classic authors, more down in there, uh, more large hardcover fiction classic novels, the foundational classic novels of the past, mainly 19th century type stuff, and down there more archival discs, uh, DVDs and sleeves, in here in this closet, uh, CDs on sale on eBay, more archival discs down there, uh, world music, country, blues, all that's in here. Uh, we have some more VHS in here that I didn't mention before. Uh, some archival personal discs down there that you can't see. Some more VHS and some uh, old fanfare magazines. Uh, some uh, video game stuff. This is some PlayStation stuff. Uh, there's a Jewel concert CD. Nancy Wilson. Just a few rods and ends in here. And the component system back here. And some more concert DVD. That's the same over here. There's concert, classical concert DVDs, more movies and multi-case sleeves and such. Uh, Brazilian CDs, a great collection of those. They go all the way down here. Female singers and such. And in here, the classical CDs. Classical CDs galore in this gigantic cabinet. Uh, and frequently played discs. So the Outer Galaxy Lounge collection is not the world's greatest collection of media even though it consists of thousands of books, thousands of movies, and thousands of music albums, and a few VHS tapes. And it is not the greatest, it's not the biggest, it might not even be the deepest, but I think for what it does hold, it's highly curated, very well selected, very well representative of the art of humanity. And if you are looking for a great film, I have it. If you're looking for a great novel, I probably have it. If you're looking for a great uh, album from the history of rock, the history of classical music or jazz, I probably have it. So it doesn't have a lot of trash in it. That's what I'm saying. It's very well selected. It's the best of the best, the creme de la creme. And yes, of course, there are guilty pleasures in there. I have things that are oddballs, odds and ends, like everybody does. There are quirks that we have of things that we like that are possibly outside the, either the mainstream or just, you know, maybe don't fit what other people think qualifies as greatness. There's some books up there I forgot to mention, some odds and ends paperbacks. So anyway, that's the extent of it. Um... Okay, well, there's no particular order about how this is going to be done. So, I think we'll just go into the stereo cabinet. There's a cabinet that I built quite a number of years ago, decades, in fact, where I could put the back 
portions of the stereo components in an accessible way. Have you ever had a setup where you had them against a wall and then any time you needed to change a particular part it became a major ordeal? Well this solved that. So I could plug in multiple <laughs> components on this uh, utility strip which is quite nice. So in here is, let's start here. You can't see very well, but what we have here are kind of the country and folk CDs. Some blues here, lots of blues. The blues continue here. Uh, and then we get into African music. This is all African CDs. And then we get into some South American. We have tango some more African, some European, various miscellaneous European folk and pop stylings. Then we have reggae down here. And what else? Various world compilations. And then we get down here. This is just sort of an area that's kind of isolated from everyone, everything else. <clears throat> this is opera, opera box sets mainly. Uh, I've had to move the operas quite a bit. I never know where to put the operas. They never quite fit with the rest of the stuff, so that's where they have to be. I don't listen to them that much. I used to listen to opera a lot more than I do today. They require a lot of time. So what we have here, we have a multi-purpose uh, going on here. These are actually all the discs here, down to here, down to here, down to there. These are the discs that I have on sale on eBay and Amazon. It's about, I guess, about 2,400 discs, I suppose. And over here are some archives of movies and um, music, just sort of downloaded music and movies. Those archives continue <coughs> under the bed. And we're not going to show all that, but there are about a dozen boxes of archive, thousands and thousands of discs under there of music and films archived from all genres of music. This is the LP cabinet, what's left of it. There's not many LPs left. I've gotten rid of most of my LPs because I don't play them that much. I'm not a big vinyl record fan like everybody else is today. When CDs came in, it was a blessing from heaven, as far as I'm concerned. I prefer them. I understand the appeal of records, but I also don't understand it, because they're bulky, they're cumbersome, they don't sound... I don't like surface noise, I hate it. And when CDs came in and got rid of that, it was great. Uh, what I kept is just kind of a weird... Uh, there's a Phase 4, London Phase 4. That was from my parents' collection. My parents didn't even listen to class. No, wait a minute. No, this is from the UofL Library collection. Never mind. Uh, what can I say about this? Mostly it's classical up here. I picked up some things at a baseball card store uh, a few years back that was just a lot of loungy stuff, old stuff, but the covers were in such beautiful condition they were a dollar a piece. So I got those mainly for aesthetics. That's the Time Life Giants of Jazz collection. These came out from roughly around 1979 to maybe 82-ish. Uh, they would issue like one every month or every two months. I can't remember. I'd pay them. I think they were like 20 to $30 each time. They were three disc sets. They're beautiful. They have um, a nice booklet inside. I'm not going to take them out, but... Uh, this was a great series. It's pre-war, pre-World War II jazz by all the greats of that era. It was a great introduction to early jazz, which I think people should start at when they're going into jazz. They really should start with the foundational classics like this. Over here we have some blues. Here's some lead belly. And that's it. This whole thing used to be filled with records only, but it's now half records. I've gotten rid of half of them. I don't have much pop or rock left at all, the Beatles and all that, and Rolling Stones. All that got sold off. Because I have all that in CD. I don't need the records. 
I even had a big a Beatles picture disc that got sold. That sold for a pretty good amount of money. I made good money off those. I actually got my money back and more from what I originally paid for them. So basically this is now books. A lot of oversized books went into this cabinet. Art books, architecture books, uh, some mountaineering books right there. Uh, art theater, just different things that don't fit in the other bookshelves. The bottom uh, are my DVD art sleeves and covers. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let me get a little one out here. This is D. So we have, there's Errol Flynn, Dodge City, Warner, Dog Day Afternoon, Dogs of War with Christopher Walken, Dogville, Lars von Trier, um, Dogtown and Z-Boys, the skateboard documentary, which is fine, uh, Donnie Darko, Don's Party, a really good Australian movie from the 70s, Donnie Brasco, Don't Bother to Knock with uh, Marilyn Monroe, Don't Look Now, the um, Nicholas Rogue film, I believe. Is that right? Yes. Uh, a really odd movie, but good. Doom Generation. What's that? What's her face in that? Who was that? Rose McGowan, possibly? I don't remember. Uh, the door. Okay, so you see the idea. What the deal is, is I instead of having a crap ton of DVDs cluttering up the shelves because they take up too much room. I didn't get rid of the cases. I just put them into kind of off corners of the basement because I didn't want them cluttering up the collection. What I did was I just put all the DVDs in little sleeves like this. That way you could literally get a thousand DVDs in one little tiny box like this. So you know like each of these is like a thousand DVDs and I've got a bunch of them. Here's more. All of these have DVDs in them, several thousand, but in a space of just a few feet. If these had been put in their normal plastic cases, they literally would fill the entire room, which is absurd. It's just, it's untenable. You can't do that. If I mean, you can, but it's just, it's hard to transport things like that. I can literally lift those boxes up really easily and take my entire collection out in seconds basically. And here we have, I have this covered just for, just to give it a nice aesthetic instead of just having all this shit. This is jazz. Uh, I'm not gonna go through, I'll go through the jazz in a separate video maybe. I don't have them doubled up because it's too hard to get to things when there's one layer behind another layer. I'm only allowing myself one layer so that you can actually get at things. I kind of stacked it here to where I have two levels, but there's nothing behind the lower level. Because again, I want to be able to get right at something and see it. That solved an old problem I had where I was just doubling up and the things that got stuck behind just didn't get played. So that's not good. Uh, what do we have here? That's more jazz. And the jazz continues to the bottom. So I made this all jazz. This used to be over there. But that's been changed. So over here we have television shows on DVD. And what do I have? I've got all the Twilight Zone. I've got all of Seinfeld. These are shows I really like that I have. I have all of Northern Exposure. All of Breaking Bad, I watched that once. I'm not that big a fan. I thought it was a great show, but only one viewing for me would is enough. It was too intense to ever watch again. Star Trek, The Next Generation, I have all that. I have almost all the X-Files except for the last season, I think. I have a good deal of the Star Trek Voyager. I've got all of Monty Python. I've got the... Avengers Complete M Appeal Collection right there. And what else? This level begins to be kind of multi-pack movie sets that don't really fit with individual movies. And 
a lot of old classics there. I, I have this mash box set, but I decided for ease of access, I, I kind of hate that box, honestly. So I just put them in this little box in individual sleeves so I can actually get to the episodes. This is Blu-ray. This is kind of the Blu-ray area. I wanted to separate those. And a lot of Blu-rays are things that I didn't have on DVD or are my favorite movies that were worth replicating in a new format or having a second copy of, not replicating. Behind that are more of the box set, classic box set things. Uh, again, down here we have things I've kind of offloaded like shows off of YouTube that I like that I wanted to archive are in there. You know, don't tell YouTube, right? And anyway, so more I've got overflow stuff in these, like rap and pop and classical and jazz discs that I had duplicate copies of are down in these. So those were something I made a few years back when I didn't have access to my collection because of pre-divorce, blah, blah, blah. It's a complicated story. So anyway, up here we have the Criterion Collection. Mainly DVDs, not really Blu-rays. DVDs are fine because these already look good to begin with. And these are some of my favorite movies or just some bargains I found on the Criterion Collection. And those are on the top of the cabinet. So that's that. Up here I have some movie books. Or music books. The music book reference books are up here. And I also have the movie reference book cabinet is here. Uh, it's kind of a mess right now. I can't really show it all to you. That'll be a separate video. I've got a lot of the classic film reference books in here. Uh, they're really nice. It's a, it's, it's a pretty complete library, the history of cinema in there. At least, you know, prior to the 2000s, I'd say. Which, is, of course, is most of the cinema history. Most of the best of it, anyway. And anyway, uh, up here is... Actually, should we just... I think we'll just continue on with discs, and then we'll get to books later. So down here below the television component area, we have more films. Uh, these are music concerts, mainly classical. There's the Frank Sinatra collection. Again, some more uh, movies down here, classic films that are in kind of unique packaging that I couldn't like separate in that method I showed you earlier. You know, they have weird multi-disc sets and things that you just can't separate them. Or they'll have the surround boxes like this where you can't really separate them. So, what's this? One from the heart, Francis Coppola's film. Pick that up for a dollar. Look at that multi-disc set at half price. Very nice. That's what a lot of my collection is. It's a lot of dollar remainders that are really great films that you just have to get them at the right time. So down here we have, this is my Brazilian CD collection right here. A really great collection of Brazilian CDs. Uh, I'm going to go through that one time. I'm going to do a separate video on these because Brazilian music really doesn't get the credit it deserves. It's probably the best music on the planet and people don't talk about it. And it's a damn shame. And then down here, it keeps going all the way to the bottom. And then down some down there. And I had some over here also in one of these boxes that they haven't been filed away yet so and up here we have women singers uh, women jazz vocalists mainly here's Susanna McCorkle kind of a, a rare Japanese CD as time goes by uh, golly I don't really here's Anita O'Day you know Ella Fitzgerald Sarah Vaughn people like that are in here and then more contemporary ones also you know like Stacy Kent for instance, and this one's ready to be filled when no, when new stuff comes in, so I'm a little ahead of the game there. 
Uh, I got a few Lewis Cole and Knower discs here that are just kind of sitting waiting to be filed. We'll talk about them maybe as a separate. This is the classical, classical cabinet. This is all classical discs in here. A to Z, classical discs. We're not even going to get into all that. It's huge. It's a huge collection. And that's the second part of the classical collection. The first part is in here. This is the old collection, A to Z. Some of them are still in the jewel cases, but a lot of them are in these flat sleeves for space. I can put all the art in here and the disc, but they take up a lot less room, as you can see. And of course, the cases are in another box somewhere off to the side just to keep it manageable. So that is all classical discs. That is all classical discs. Up here we have discs that I play frequently. A lot of this is more new jazz stuff. Here's Pedro Marchins, who's a great Brazilian guitarist uh, who plays sometimes with Genevieve Artadi, uh, who's famous from nowhere. Well, I say famous relatively, I guess. And then what else? Oh, back here we have the rock CDs which I made an earlier video on the cabinet. And they're all in there. We got tons of rock pop and down on the bottom some rap. Rap and hip hop. And let me see, let me just pull something out at random. Let's see what we have. We've got uh, Tori Amos. I've got all of Tori Amos or Tori Amos, however you want to say it. Uh, the Concretes, what's this, uh, Christensen, what else, uh, Eon, what we got here, 50 Tons of Black Terror, great albums in here, man, really good stuff, it's not just Beatles and not just you know, I've got 90s indie. I've got a very good eclectic taste in pop and rock, let's be honest. All right, so the book portion. Where shall we start? Well, we were over here. So we have these oversized books. We've got art books. Here's an, a book on Erte, Art Deco. It's one of the most beautiful books I've ever seen. I can't even, I'll have to show that as a separate video because it's an adventure in itself. So that's that. And then what else? Over here, the movie reference books, which I previously mentioned. Up here. This is my foundational collection right here. These are classic literature, classic fiction, classic authors. Balzac, uh, John Cheever, Colette, Dickens, uh, Gibbons' Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, the entire set. Uh, History of Tom Jones by Henry Fielding, which I did read finally, and it's a great novel. And just bunches of classics, D.H. Lawrence, Franz Kafka, uh, Gunter Grass, uh, Hemingway, Oblomov by Goncharov, and just a bunch of them. Uh, Thomas Hardy, Henry Miller, H.L. Mencken. Marcel Proust's entire uh, Remembrance of Days Past. I guess they call it something else now. I forgot. Uh, Francois Rabelais. Gertrude Stein's The Making of Americans. I gave that a stab a couple of years ago. I kind of liked it, even though it was so repetitive. It was very incantatory, I guess you could say. Incantatory. I appreciated the musicality of it even though most people are going to find this to be unreadable. Uh, the Grapes of Wrath, which I didn't finish, unfortunately. Not because it wasn't great. I just didn't have time. I'm going to get back to it. Uh, Marquis de Sade books. Nathaniel West. Here's two, two of my favorite novels. Nathaniel West, Day of the Locust, and the um, Miss Lonely Hearts is in this collection, which is his collected works. Unfortunately, it's so thin, but he was such a master at what he was able to write and publish. 
Uh, this is something I recently added from a, an estate sale, The Outline of History by H.G. Wells. That's been on my list for years, and I just never got a copy. So I've got a copy now. A nice hardcover copy, too. Two volumes. So over here, in this very lovely cabinet, we have more literature. These are more of the paperbacks. Paperback sizes, and I've got it kind of nicely arranged in kind of a symmetrical way. I'm not going to go through all the authors. These are a lot of international authors and more new authors, like uh, more contemporary fiction. And it, the collections continue down in there. I'm not going to open all of that. But that's more up-to-date novels. And then the larger up-to-date novels. When I say up-to-date, I'm talking the last 50 years, I guess. There's The Magus with John Fowles, which is a great novel. I love that. Bunches of Aeneas and Inn here. Uh, there's some more Aeneas and Inn. Uh, what else? Philip Roth, John Updike, and Kurt Vonnegut are all down here. And I have pretty much, not every single thing, but almost everything that they did down there. Again, you know, more contemporary. Doris Lessing, William Kennedy. But again, when I say contemporary, last 40, 50 years. Uh... You know, late 20th century. Here's the one of the volumes of Margaret Young's Miss Macintosh, My Darling, a great novel that I still haven't finished. It's quite a chore. It's quite a feat to be able to get through that. Nabokov's Ada. I haven't read that yet, even though I've read about five Nabokov's at this point. So up here we have nonfiction. This one's this is the political, socioeconomic, and history type stuff. More of that here, pop culture, uh, various nonfiction. Here's some music that didn't fit anywhere else. Music reference books. Uh, I've got Skinny Bitch. Look at that. Uh, 1877 Year of Violence. A really good overview of the early labor movement. Here's all the president's men. We got all we got our uh, our uh, Kennedy assassination conspiracy shit right there. Um, these are just some old books that I'm using to prop up this silver lamp. A bunch of old books here, just kind of a myriad of things. Same here, older books. Some really cool pulp novel, Beyond the Forest. I saw the original movie with Betty Davis, which is hilarious and also very moving. I have to say, I really like it. Uh, Graham Greene is all in here. This is kind of the Graham Greene cube, if you will, because he just wasn't fitting. I had him over there before, but he was dominating the whole thing. I couldn't get any other author in. Graham Greene's probably my favorite author. I've read at least a dozen, maybe more, of his books at this point. So down here, we have more nonfiction like history, spying, uh, war. There's John Tolan's No Man's Land. Cross of Iron, I think that's fiction, but I've mixed some fiction in with nonfiction because when it comes to World War II, a lot of the fiction is highly informed by actual events. So it's kind of not too different. Uh, so we have just a more of a melange of non-fictional history things. Here's a book on African Explorer. Here's Colditz about the escape from the prison in World War II, the Nazi POW camp. Bernard Montgomery doc, um, biography there. Game of Foxes by Ladislaw Fargo. Lots of stuff. Uh, che Guevara biography here. Uh, Al Capone. Some Hunter S. Thompson bio stuff in there. Hein Rand Atlas Shrugged I've got, just to be a completist, I guess. Uh, even though I think her whole gig is a bunch of horse shit, but that's another story. And just more history. Here's Lindbergh. Roy Cohn, another nice piece of work there. James Agee, A Life. Still has the wrap on it. Very nice archival copy there. 
Third Reich in power, Richard J. Evans. Down here, just kind of a mixture of oversized books that really have no organization. War stuff here, World War One, World War Two, other wars and historical events down here. Here's some of the Prager um, Osprey war books, which are quite nice. I should go over some of those sometime. Here's an old thing that was put out in World War II in the middle of the war, which is really an interesting curio. Uh, again, more World War II. And there's the Boer War. Really big book on that. Some Russian history stuff. There's a giant KGB book. Here's John Tolan's The Last Hundred Days about, you know, Hitler in the bunker. And here, oh, here's one of my favorites. Harrison Salisbury's The 900 Days about the siege at Leningrad. Great, not great, great. It's not a novel, a great book. Talking to different people who were there at the time. Yet another Hitler bio by Joachim Fest. Uh, I have not read that one. Uh, I've read Tolan's and I read, oh God, I've read two other ones that I can't remember right now. Um, Alan Clark's Barbarossa, which is quite good. Good overview of that campaign. All right, we got a Sears and Roebuck uh, kind of catalog replication book, which is really cool. Uh, John Ellis's Casino. This is a great book about the battle at Monte Casino. Really great book. There's Hitler's, uh, Tolan's Hitler bio, which I've had since like 1977. It's a real old, one of the oldest books in my collection. Inside the Third Reich by Albert Speer. Great book. Whatever you may think of the man himself. Again, in more war paperbacks up there. So, what else? So down here, we have kind of old popular culture, old movies, old radio people, old entertainers. Uh, that's all down in this. And I still don't have enough room. Michelangelo Antonioni, Fred Astaire, Humphrey Bogart, Louis Buñuel, Noel Coward, George Cukor, Robert Evans, Gene Fowler. Interesting character. Uh, he, he was associated with W.C. Fields, which is kind of nice that they're together here. Bunch of W.C. Fields stuff. All that's W.C. Fields. Uh, Fellini, uh, John Ford, Lillian Gish, Judy Garland, Alec Guinness. I've read a couple of Alec Guinness's bios. They're delightful. Um, just some more movie stuff. Goldwyn. My Lunches with Orson by Henry Jaglum, which is quite a good book. I recommend that highly. Um, what else? Just Buster Keaton. And this is a book on Henri Langlois and the Cinémathèque Française, which I have not... I don't think I read that. I've, I've read so many, I can't always remember. But it's a fascinating story in any case. Irving Thalberg, more Orson Welles. Here we have some vintage uh, kind of books on humorous Alexander Woolcott. Uh, here's a book on the old theater, The Great White Way by Alan Churchill. That's going to be really good because I've got another Alan Churchill book on the old theater that's fantastic. Uh, here's another Alexander Woolcott. They're kind of stuck in here a little bit. Here we go. When Rome Burns, still with the dust jacket, which is kind of nice. Uh, here's a book, uh, kind of a compilation book Steve Allen did on the funny man. I think he interviews a bunch of contemporary comics at the time, like in the 50s and 60s. Minutes of the Last Meeting by Gene Fowler. This is a great, great book. One of my favorites. It's uh, kind of the um, Hellfire Club, I think they call themselves. It was the um, W.C. Fields and John Barrymore and Satakichi... Gosh, I can't remember his name. He's the artist. Uh, this is who I was trying to think of. Sadakichi Hartman. Look at that guy. How would you like to have him staring through your soul? Japanese artist at the time. They were kind of just drinking buddies in Hollywood. And John Fowler, or Gene Fowler, I think. I don't know. Was it John Fowler? John Fowler was the, the artist? I can't remember. But Gene Fowler was the son who was the writer who wrote this book about that 
little collective of comrades who were kind of considered themselves, I guess, outcasts in Hollywood. They were just drinking buddies, basically, and they were just a lot of fun together. This is about their times together. It's a really wonderful book. This is Orson Welles by R.I.P., the late, great Peter Bogdanovich. This is kind of essential. Interviews with Orson Welles by Peter Bogdanovich. What I really like about this is this version of Orson Welles, which is kind of the, you know, the maligned and ostracized great artist and nice guy, sort of, versus this version in Jaglum where Orson Welles just comes off as a complete jerk off. I like to have both of these. I think they both give a true picture. You just have to put them together and and come up with a more three-dimensional portrait of the man. Because he wasn't always a great guy. I mean, you know, artists who become obsessed with things neglect things like their family and stuff. That's just the way it happens, unfortunately. So, Robert Benchley. Love Robert Benchley. Here's one, two, three, four hardcovers of Benchley. He was a humorist back in the 20s, 30s, 40s. Uh, heavy drinker, part of the Algonquin Round Table with Dorothy Parker and friends. Also, Alexander Wolcott here was with them. It's kind of nice that they're all together. Uh, Franklin Pierce Adams, etc. Uh, his books are very light. They're not terribly intellectual per se. They're just very light observational comedy, very genteel, just barely subversive, kind of attacks on domesticity. They're fun. They're just fun light readings. If you just want to read like, you know, a two minute essay, he's got tons of those in these books. These are like collections of newspaper articles he did for the most part. Uh, interesting guy to me, always has been. Uh, here's Haywood Brune, who was also kind of part of that New York circle. Uh, H. Allen Smith, Lost in the Horse Latitudes, and Low Man on Totopole. These are kind of like Benchley. They're kind of these little short newspaper humorous essays on contemporary issues. Contemporary being the 30s, 40s, and 50s. I like that kind of stuff. So, here we have some more 1960s pop culture. There's a riot going on. Uh, the Last Party. We got Janis Joplin, Love Janis. Uh, you know, 60s psychedelic era stuff here, and uh, probably some swinging London, I'm guessing. Here's a Casablanca book, Round Up the Usual Suspects. Kind of nice. Generation Ecstasy there. I guess that's more of the 90s. Um, X-rated The Mitchell Brothers. Uh, Monty Python book, From Reverence to Rape by Molly Haskell. I started reading this. It's really good. I just never finished it. Um... Bing Crosby's Volume 1 by Gary Giddens. I started that. I didn't get very far into it. Not that it isn't good. It's again, yeah, you start books and you just don't have time. Sometimes. Uh, here's Duke Ellington. Some books on Billy Strayhorn and Duke Ellington. Uh, Andy Warhol stuff. And then, again, we're kind of rounding it out. Oh, here's um, Oscar Levant. I've got one, two, three Oscar Levant books. Oscar Levant was... A crazy character, a really fascinating guy from back in the early to mid 20th century in Hollywood and New York. He was an all around entertainer. He was a humorist, he was a pianist, classical pianist, radio entertainer, movie star. He was pretty much everything, and he was also a nutcase. He was on drugs, he was um, hospitalized for mental problems. He was one of the wittiest men who ever lived, and just funny, but probably entirely insufferable to live with. These are three books he wrote, and they're just wonderful books. Just fun as hell. Um, Preston Sturges, the director. Paul Robeson, a biography. Really interesting stuff here. Here's a book on Mae West that I haven't read yet. Here's a bio by David Niven. Uh, there's Patti Smith's Just Kids, which I have read and I loved. And that's about all. There's a Chaplin bio. Some S.J. Perelman humorist collections. I think I got some Woody Allen in here. Here's some Marx Brothers and a Lenny Bruce book down here. So 
that's that's about all I can show you I think so I don't have a huge VHS collection uh, most of it's in flux right now most of it is being used to produce content here uh, especially the historical homemade VHS tapes um, here's some I've acquired recently there's some over here in this cabinet or in this closet I should say this is a lot of stuff that's already been posted online stuff that's from cable TV and local television there's a few in this box that I'm working on right now here's another box of recent acquisitions from an estate sale that I'm working on stuff from mainly the late 90s and 2000s so so yeah here's some cool ones these haven't even come out of the bag yet there's some things that we're gonna maybe put the intros on on the channel so that's that there's books in other rooms but they're not really part of the core collection so I think that's a pretty good view of what's in the outer galaxy media archives so I, I know I'm I know I'm leaving something out but again at least I know where everything is even though it doesn't sound now the place is kind of a mess here because I've been doing some studio stuff and some organizing I'm trying to reorganize and fit some new material in as you can see there's look at this thing I picked up at a at an estate sale it's um, this old radio from it's a Time Life radio. I just love the style of it. Look at that color. and Look at that kind of curved style. It's awesome. It's a cassette player and it does play. So honestly, this is the only cassette player, working cassette player I have right now, which is kind of sad. I wish I had a component cassette player, but I don't. So that's it, guys. Uh, I wish I had done this better in a more organized way, but let's call this version one maybe I'll do a secondary version later where it looks like I know what the hell I'm doing so until then we're signing off